Guys, welcome back to the channel, Guns, Ammo, and Drones. And as you can see here, we've got a Sarsomaz ST45. Now, this will probably be the first video that you will have seen on YouTube. And I think that's really cool. It's one of the reasons why I got the gun, because I cannot find a video of this gun on YouTube. They do make the K2, but it is a completely different pistol. This one here is the ST45. It is in the stainless version, um, but I can't find any videos on it. I was turned on to the SAR brand, the SAR Somaz brand, by uh, one of the comments that you guys left, and I ended up buying the, the uh, SAR 9, and I wanted another 45, a full-size 45, and, and saw that they carried the SAR USA 45, and there are no videos up until this one. So I'm glad that I'm the first. I'm not trying to toot my horn or anything, but you know what? I, I couldn't wait to make the video because it's just a, it's a cool gun. As far as some of the features on this gun, we'll just start here at the bottom. The, uh, the magazine, now, you know, I got to start off with saying this, as you can tell that there's no magazine release like there normally would be on a standard pistol and you can see that it's right here it's ambidextrous and there it is now i'm still getting used to this i found that when you hold the gun to use your trigger finger or your mid middle finger is probably the best and you would just push it down you saw it move right there and it releases the mag and while i'm at that let me show you this look at this positive eject that is crazy <laughs> I really like that. You know, whenever I'm done uh, with the with the rounds that are in the magazine, and I want to do a, a mag mag switch. Normally, you know, it's so much easier just to do it that way. But you've got to use this this different kind of mag release here. But it just shoots the magazines out. And by the way, mags are empty. Guns are clear. Same with my Glock 21 and my Smith and Wesson 4506. They have the magazines in them, but they do not have any rounds in them. And we'll get to those in a minute. Just look at this gun. Look how gorgeous this thing is. I mean, it's just a really nice gun. Um, the magazine, it holds 12 and one in a chamber, so it gives you 13 rounds. It does come with two. I went ahead and loaded up some ball ammo in that one already. We'll jump up here to the, um, to the grip here. Now, this is pretty unique. You don't see guns like this, which is what the appeal of this pistol was for me. Um, the front straps, as you can see, are just like little notches and, and checkers, but, but look how look how deep those grooves are. It's pretty impressive. And then these side grips here are just little raised nubs, but you can also tell that it has this sunken down area, which is pretty interesting. The back strap is very similar to a lot of other pistols. You can see that you just pop out that pin, and it does come with one of these, your steel pin, and it will knock that out, and then you can change them. Um, I'm not gonna go into too much, but you've got small, I think I've got the medium on here right now. There's a small and a large. It actually came with the large on it, and I thought it was very comfortable, but I usually put mediums on. And it's very similar to a lot of other, a lot of other pistols. Now, as far as this is concerned, and it might not show it here, I'm not 100% satisfied with, you can see that see, see that right there, that, that gap. Now the other SAR that I have doesn't have that, and all of these seem to do this, but you can actually see through there, and you can see light through the other side. Now, in the grand scheme of things, is that a big deal? No. It doesn't change the way that it feels, but I do wish that these were a little bit tighter along the lines of a lot of other pistols that uh, that are out there that have something similar to this. And this is like a reverse texturing of this. This one here you can see sticks out. These ones here, they actually sink in. That doesn't detract from the feel of the gun. The, the feel of the gun is fantastic. Um, I I can't see this thing coming out of my hand uh, shooting shooting this gun. I think it's gonna do just fine and it's got its name all over the bottom there. It's got a little flare right here for your for your pinky, but you've got plenty of room. 
Um, and let's see, does it flare? No, it actually has the little indents here so that you can pull the magazine out in case you have any, have any issues. Moving on up, you can see that it does have a frame mounted safety. Now, as, as the same as my SAR-9, it's kind of hard to activate. It's, it's kind of hard to, to push it up. And that's probably a good thing. Some of you guys don't like safeties on guns, whether it's frame or slide. This one here, it's not bad. It's not going to get accidentally engaged, okay? And it's much easier to disengage it while you have your normal grip as opposed to engaging it because there's no way your thumbs just don't have enough power to go up. So it's, it's tough to engage it and that's fine. So whenever you're shooting, there's really no chance of it getting pushed up and activated. So then you move over here to the slide stop. It's a pretty big beefy slide stop. And this actually is also the takedown pin. So it serves two purposes. Um, you can also see that the trigger does not have a trigger safety like most of the striker fired pistols out there have. Um, actually the SAR-9 that I have, uh, it's, it's very similar looking, but it does have a trigger safety on it. And it's one of the things that I didn't recognize it not having when I ordered this gun. The trigger guard is really big. If you guys wear gloves, some of you guys wear gloves in the videos or, or you're making a, a video in, in cold weather and you want to have those gloves, you got plenty of room in here. Front rail is really nice. You can put just about anything on there. It's, it's pretty, pretty massive up in there. And then you can also see how high the, the uh, slide is. This is a pretty big slide, real tall. Matter of fact, this might be I'm not 100% sure, but I am pretty certain out of all the guns that I've got and all the guns that I've seen and shot, this might have the highest bore axis out of, out of all of them, uh, barring, let's say, a high point, which I do not own. Um, I, I, I want to say that this is probably up there, uh, even more than, than the SIG M17 that I've got. Um, I just think it's, it's, a, it's a much bigger... A much bigger bigger slide but it does have full ambidextrous controls so you've got your safety over here on this side you've got your slide stop over here now this one here on this side for some reason and on a lot of pistols that have these dual slide stop and slide releases it's very difficult to use this on this side the one that seems to work the best is this one I imagine you probably could get this to work. I couldn't get it to work um, even almost with two thumbs. It was hard to, to get the slide to release. And then your safety, or I'm sorry, not your safety, your, uh, your mag release, it's ambidextrous. As you can see, it's on both sides. So this gun is just fully ambidextrous in, in just about every way uh, that you need. As far as, we'll take it apart. I'll try to take it apart anyway. Um, the barrel. Highly polished, just like the SAR-9, highly polished barrel. I mean, everything inside of that there in the barrel is, is uh, uh, very, very polished. And the same with the recoil spring. And I'll take it apart here. I'm probably going to have to stop the video to get a little pin or something to push that out. Matter of fact, I can probably use what's there. But we'll go ahead and take it down, and I'll show you how, uh, how it tears down and, and what it looks like on the inside, because it's also pretty unique. As far as the dimensions of the gun, now I'm going to go ahead and set this one down here for a second. The one that I would probably compare it to the most would be the Glock 21. Now this is not this is not the SF model, so this is actually the 21. I have the compensated model, but it is the full size. It is it's the real big beefy frame. All right. Now as far as Size-wise, these guns are very, very, very similar. All right, I'll try to line that up and see if I can show you. Okay, I think I want to say the gl the Glock is a little shorter, and and it is not by much, but just a little bit. And then you can see how much wider the SAR is over the Glock, as far as the the back end there. 
So they're very similar. So if you've shot the Glock 21, not the not the SF, but just the regular full size Glock 21, then then you kind of have an idea of how big this gun is. It does not compare <laughs> to the Smith and Wesson. The Smith and Wesson has has it beat. Uh, it, the Smith and Wesson is just bigger, just a bigger gun overall. Thinner, of course, since it's single stack, but it's just a, a much bigger gun and really is in a class in its in its own being the 1911 style anyway getting back to this uh let's see here we've got the rear sight which is fully adjustable windage and elevation and there's your screw there which it does come with a tool uh right here to adjust all of that and then there's your other windage uh, controls there they are metal Nice high sight. Now, the one thing that I really wasn't too happy with this, and it shows up a little bit different in this video as, as opposed to in person without the light blaring on it. These back two are grayish in comparison to the, the white dot of the front, and it's a much bigger white dot in the front and two smaller dots back here. I'm okay with that. Um, I prefer these to be a little bit brighter only because there's this bright light right here does it show up as 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 real white but in in reality they're gray and it's going to take me a little bit of time to get used to very similar to the mag release it does have a striker loaded indicator so it is so it is cocked that's what it looks like so you know when you see red someone could be dead <laughs> Uh, trigger pull on this is really nice and as you can see as soon as you pull the trigger that thing disappears and then you can just give it a little pull back and there it is again okay so trigger pull on this let me set this down let's get out the Lyman here and let's do a trigger pull now I've already done this a few times and I've gotten I've gotten about five ten five pounds ten ounces but let's go ahead and let's go ahead and try this here Oh, I must have did. I must have done something wrong. Yep, I did. Sorry about that, guys. All right, you gotta you gotta cock it first. <laughs> All right, so let's do this again. Here we go. Five, almost six pounds. I'm gonna try it one more time because I was getting five ten pretty religiously earlier, and um, and that's fine. It's all gonna be relative. That says 6.2. That's okay. It's about a six pound trigger, five and a half to six pound trigger, but it feels really nice as far as pulling the trigger. And the trigger's all steel. All right. As far as reset, let's see what we can hear. Pretty quick reset. I'm, I'm pretty pleased with that. If you guys are into, into resets, that's not bad. That is not bad at all. Just a little bit of take up. Let me see what we got here. A little bit of take up before it hits that sear wall and then about five and a half to six pounds all right so let's go ahead and take this thing apart and i'll show you the inside i'm going to try to do this behind the camera you can see that there's a notch right here there's a notch right there and the notch right there okay so basically i'm going to turn it upside down a little here let me see how am i going to do this let me see if i can do it this way because it has the notches on here too all right there we go let's push this pin out if i can get it in there uh, almost got it all right let me see here let me let me do this behind the camera I'll, I'll just push it out a little bit there we go okay so you push that pin out let it go and then you can see that this thing just kind of falls falls clear okay you pull it out and there's that piece it's pretty interesting i don't I don't have another pistol that looks quite like that one. All right, pull the trigger, pull it apart. I've only cleaned this a little bit. It still has a lot of copper lube on it and I'll eventually clean it up a little bit more, but kind of pretty basic. I mean, look how look how basic that that is in there, but oh so similar, all right. And this also looks very similar too. Now this is a little bit different. I this is my first gun with this particular kind of system here, where the spring looks like this, 
And to be honest with you, I'm not sure how much of that comes apart. I know that it does, but I have not taken it apart. But it is dual capture spring. It's all stainless steel. And this thing here is pretty, pretty beefy too. So let's set that down right there. Pull this polished barrel and breech out here. Very nice. I mean, it's, it's really, really polished good. And with this being a Turkish gun, I certainly can tell in here that this thing is made really well. No tool marks. The uh, the factory, matter of fact, Sar Sarsomaz, which who makes this, is actually the largest gun manufacturer in Europe. It's pretty impressive. Their factory is ISO 9001, so it's a state-of-the-art facility. And again, I haven't taken this thing apart either. You can see the back of the striker right there and to put it back it just goes back very very similar or the, or the exactly exact same as as all the other ones and then as far as this goes when you put this back matter of fact i actually forget how this goes now i've only done this once let me see if it goes this way all right do we do it that way we got that in there it's a learning learning process with me so we gotta sorry about that guys we have to go in like that and it hooks in right like that let me do this again so you can see how see how it goes it just kind of you just push it down and lock it in just like that all right and then obviously to put it back together you do it very very similar and just kind of pull that back to hear that little click and let me find the pin and the pin goes right into there line it up and you're good to go it works fantastic guys this this gun's really nice ergonomically it's fantastic to hold the feel of it with all these different back straps they all feel very similar You've got this front that is real flat here. It just gives you a really nice hold, a really nice grip of the gun. And then all these recessed textured areas, it just adds something different to these pistols. Back in the day, actually even just a few years ago, I'm not ashamed to say that I was a Glock fanboy. I had almost every Glock that you can imagine and um, I was a big fan of its simplicity, and I thought that these were fantastic looking guns, and they still are. But my eyes have been opened to all these new guns that are coming out now that are just absolutely incredible. If you've never seen one of these, if you've never held one of these, uh, which chances are you, you haven't, um, I still have yet to see any of these Sarsomaz pistols at a gun store and I check all the time whenever I'm in areas where there's different gun stores I've never been to and some of these guys don't even know that these exist and I didn't even know these existed until like a month ago and I'm very happy with this brand Sarsal Maws it's like they it's like they asked everybody that they asked what do you guys want in a pistol? What features do you want? But then they added their own because to be honest with you, I would have never said a trigger guard mag release. It's just different. But I think that's one of the things that I really like about this gun. And all the little things that they, just the little things that they did with these stiplings and just the design and where you put your thumb, it just feels really nice. Guys, check it out. This. This gun is a very, very nice gun made in Turkey. Turkey has really hit home runs over these last few years with a lot of their pistol lines, with their Canics, with the SARS, with uh, the Gersons. And you can check out one of my other videos that I recently did uh, where I talk about my top five pistols that I own that are made in Turkey. And this one here, I just might have to do a top six. I don't know, but this one's really nice. It feels great. 
it's at a fantastic price for what you get. Two magazines, you get the box and a little sticker and and uh, all your little toolkits and things like that, which, you know what, am I gonna use it? Probably not. But their attention to detail with this particular pistol and a lot of their other pistols, the, uh, the, the, the SAR-9, is just over the top and quality and top notch. If you want a value pistol and you want something that is going to serve you well for whatever you're going to use it for, I'm not going to carry this. So this is just going to be a range gun, just a, like a plinking around gun. It's a little bit too big to carry. Um, and you don't want to spend a lot of money. I would highly suggest you guys check out the SAR brand. Very, very nice pistol. Guys, thanks for uh, checking in with the channel and watching this video. I've got some pretty exciting news coming up here pretty soon with a uh, potential sponsor for the channel. I've looked at some of their products and um, I'm really excited about it. And um, we'll, we'll talk about that uh, maybe over the next couple, couple videos. I've got a couple more guns coming in and uh, we'll, uh, we'll do some more here shortly. Have a great afternoon, evening, morning, and uh, we'll see you guys later. Thanks.